Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to our first open classroom webinar for 2021 and the 60th in this series which began in April last year. Before I forget, all the very best for 2021. Let's make this a great year, which attendance wise today is off to a record start with regards to the amount of first time attendees, making this one of the largest open classroom audiences to date. To both our new and regular attendees, please remember our library of past webinars can be found by going to webinars under the services menu on our website. And please feel free to utilize these searchable topic FAQ videos, around 300 created from this webinar series. We have also recently added the free self-learning section for anybody new to Civil Designer or anyone looking for a refresher course. We have also digitized all of our, P, our CPD point training courses, which are now available online. And finally, please upgrade to version 8.4 if you have not done so already. This version utilizes our new standalone and or network, yes, network, something we will never do away with, cloud-based, rental or perpetual, once again, perpetual, something we'll never do away with, licensing systems. So, back to today's webinar, where we welcome back Christopher Smith who many of you will know well from our support center. During Chris's presentation today, please feel free to utilize the text chat service on your GoToWebinar app or web page to ask us any questions you may have during his presentation. After today's webinar, we'll post a copy of our on our website in the webinar section. So, good afternoon, Chris, and please take it away. Thanks, Charles, and welcome everybody to this webinar. As Charles previously stated, we're going to be looking at GIS shape files and how to bring this and create a model in our project. We're going to start off with a blank civil designer project. So I'll go and say file new. And we can just have a look at the settings. So we're going to go to the CAD mode and we'll have our look at settings, drawing settings. We'll make sure that that is an A0 and that one millimeter equals one meter. Great, I'm happy with those settings. And we can also change that to Surveyor. You could work in the Cartesian plane, but then you would need to insert the points manually when you're importing the GIS. I'd rather have it set to Surveyor plane, and then it will come in using the coordinates of the GIS. We can press OK. And we can then go and save the project. So let's go and say File Save. And we can go to the folder we've been working in today. I'm going to make a new folder quickly, subfolder, and just call this Civil Project. And we'll call this the Civil Project. Um, Great, with that saved, we can then look at importing the model or the GIS. Before we can do that, we just need to set up some CAD layers. So let's go right click over here. And I'm gonna put in, we can call this the GIS. The cadastral boundaries, so we can also have contours as well. So we can convert that into a civil designer terrain DTM or digital terrain model at a later stage. So we can then press OK. And I'm going to bring in the cadastral boundary so we can go and make that JS cadastral boundaries. And in CAD mode, I can then go to file load drawing. And I'll load in the shape files so we can bring in those cadastral boundaries and say open. This is all the text that's all attributes to the, the shapes that you're going to bring in. I only want to know the earth numbers at this stage. 
So we can choose to bring in the earth numbers. I highlight it and I select to send it across. And um, we can ignore the heights at this stage. That's three millimeters. Maybe we want to make it three, three millimeters in height. We can then say OK. It'll ask us if you want to import it as full polygons, otherwise as pl closed polylines. I'm going to choose closed polylines, so I'm going to say no. I'll press Z A, and it'll zoom to this location. I always prefer to have a quicker zoom, so I will go to my name viewports. I'll say named. Viewport one is fine, and I'll draw box around it and then I can press the red tick and I can close that. So if I've pressed R and I now can I can now press one and it'll zoom to that window whenever I want to go there. You can see the text height is fine. Everything seems to be okay. And now I'd like to bring in the DTM or the terrain contours. So so let's change this over to the contours and go to file load drawing change this across to shape files click on the contours I want to bring the elevations across three millimeters in height is perfect and I'm happy with that you'll see over here it says all 56. Let's have a look at what that is. We've got a groups, lightweight polylines, and text. Now I'm not happy with the groups, so I can't really do anything with that. The lightweight polylines I can convert to a DTM. So what I'll do now is I will select on my screen and press escape. I'll see there's the groups, and if I select this one, that's a lightweight polyline. Great. So let's select the groups. I'm going to then select one of them, right click, select same type. I've got all 12 of them now. And in CAD mode, I can go to Tools, Explode once. Great. So let's have a look at switching off the cadastral boundaries for now. Can see we're dealing with a contour of 38 sitting at here behind it and we're going through to 92. So what I'll do now is I'll go and say survey mode. I'll go to file project settings and I'll select the terrain database. If I want to convert these contours into a DTM, I need a database to store them. So we'll go and we'll say, we'll call this the Civil Project DTM, and we can say Open. It'll say that it doesn't exist. Do I want to create it? And I'll say Yes. You need to get this information from your land surveyors that work in the, in the city where this data is from. We at Civil Design, I can't tell you what information to put here. I'll now go and convert that. So I'm gonna go in survey mode. I'm gonna to go to file, import, Convert drawing entities, multiple polylines. I'll zoom in over here to get the 38. And then I'll zoom out of the whole project. So I want to scan the whole project. But I know that that's where the um, 92 is, contour. So I'll make sure I'm passing over it. I'll change that to 38. And I'll uh, do intervals of two, and that gets the 92. I'm happy about that. We can't use the, the elevations from polyline because these lightweight polylines 
are not populated with an in elevation in the properties. The point name is up to you. So destination surface for, for our project, we're going to do it in surface one, but you can save it to anyone. And then generate as, we're going to generate as feature lines um, so that the contours become feature lines. And then when we fill in with break lines, they will never cross over those feature lines. I'll select the height so that I can see what's been processed. Over here, I see a couple haven't been processed up to 50. These never crossed over that perpendicular to that line that I drew, so they would not be processed. So we know that it's from here. Let's go and put those through. So I'll go back to importing it again. Screen output is fine. Let's make sure that we start here. And that would be 52 feature lines when I press OK. So it scanned those as well, brought those through. We can switch off these and switch on the contours. Let's turn off the CAD for now. So I'll go over here, right click over there. I'll make zero the current layer and we can switch off this information now. Here you can see I've got the triangles on, the break lines are being shown, and I want to fill in between the break lines with the fill in between the feature lines with the break lines. I'll go to terrain mode and I'll go to model triangulate on disk. I'll process surface one and I'll use the maximum line length of 30 meters and we'll say okay. Here you can see it's processed that and put break lines in between the feature lines for us. We can then switch that off and put the contours on and now you can see you've got the quick contour showing. So we're happy that this is now brought through and we can work with this and uh, modeling other parts of our project. So we can put the cadastral boundaries back on if you wish, and you can view those as well with the contours. You can also see if you right click, you will be able to view the contours in 3D. Let's go ahead and create the sewer network, but first we need to set up the GIS for importing. I like to have a different CAD layer for each uh, aspect of my sewer model. And let's have a look at that. So if we add, we'll put the GIS, we'll call it uh, GIS SE for the sewer, and then we'll call this the pipes. I'll do one for the pipe diameters as well. Manholes invert level or invert levels, plural. We also need a um, CAD of the sewer um, out, out for so that when it's modeling, it knows where to drain the sewage towards. This is something that we do manually, and these were all, we're going to attempt to bring this information from GIS in. There might be a few pieces of information missing, and uh, I'll try and explain how to handle that and how we'll do it in this model. I'm going to switch off the cadastral boundaries for now. I don't need that information. And I'm going to bring in the pipes. So let's make the sewer pipes the, the, the current layer for now. And we'll just go to CAD mode and then we'll go and say file load drawing. We'll change that to 
shape files and we'll bring in the sewer pipes. Would like to bring in some other information, so I'm going to choose to also bring through the nominal diameter as text, and three millimeters in height is fine. You'll notice over here that it's brought in the text as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Escape once, select one of the height text, and then I will select the same type. With the select same type selected, I'm going to go and use the properties like a filter and change that to the pipe diameter. So the text is now sitting in the pipe diameter for the GIS sewer. We need to bring in the invert levels. So let's bring that through. Let's change this to invert levels. We can go to file load drawing. We'll then load in the shape file and we'll bring in the sewer manholes. We don't need to bring in the, the physical manholes. I'm more interested in the information about the manholes because Civil Designer will see two CAD lines terminating and it'll know it needs to draw a manhole there anyway. So we'll want to bring in the invert levels and that is stored in it's brought through points and text. I'm not too sure about the points. We probably want to delete that. And it's brought in the text as, as well. And that's sitting in the layer called manholes. Let's just quickly see if we can isolate those points, those CAD points. I'm going to do a box selection. So everything inside this box will be selected. There I can see I've selected the point. I'm going to use holding down the shift key and use a crossing selection to deselect the text. And now I'm left with the point and in the properties you can see I've selected the point. I'm going to right click and go to select same type. Selected all 17 points, CAD points, and I'm going to delete that. Pressing the delete key on the keyboard. I really don't need that information. Um, the invert levels are in meters above sea level. However, this time, this type of accuracy is never needed. You wouldn't even be able to construct it this accuracy. So I'm not too sure what the GIS department was thinking with having that. Um, but I'm just glad that we've got some invert levels because I found that a lot of the time um, Z values don't get stored with the, the, in the GIS departments. You'll notice that there's some information missing here. It's more than likely that the pipe is actually longer than this piece because it's cutting off on the edge of this D, uh, DTM on this side as well and over here. If you are going to put in levels that are missing, it's best to go and get that level surveyed and put in. We don't know where this pipe is and that won't form part of this video. So we'll just cut it off. You would need to find out where this pipe is in the real in a real world project because it is contributing to your flows. So you would need to actually go and find more information on these pipes and get those invert levels surveyed by a prof survey professional. I'm just going to remove them for now. And you can see this pipe is ending off the DTM here. Um, you would need to get more information for the DTM. For now, I'm not too worried. You can also notice that all the pipes are 160 diameter. So we can actually just set up the pipe diameters in the default settings, which I'll show you in a moment. We're not really worried. Here I'm going to actually take off this pipe and I'm going to terminate at this location. And I'm going to terminate at this location here. Um, it's always a bit, uh, a bit worrying if it's going off the DTM. You'll see if I put the triangles on, it's right on the edge there. So what we can do is just move it up. I'll just put it over here. You can't do this in the real world. You actually need to go and get it surveyed in a real project. Great, now what we need to do is 
create the outfalls. Remember, this is a manual process just to show the computer where the lowest outlet is on your project. And in CAD mode, I can go to draw, circle, and I'll do center with the radius. So there I can do a one meter radius, press the green tick. And well, that's a one meter diameter. That's fine. And I'd like to snap to the end here. Okay. Let's just press J and enter. So let's put it in there at the end of this CAD line. I'll come back and check it in a moment. And I'll press J and enter here. Here you can see it's on the center or on the edge of the line. And here it's on this edge of this line here. Great, and those are both sitting in the layer called CAD Outfall. And I don't have an invert level for this uh, line over here. So we would need to actually get a invert level surveyed and placed in here if we want to be accurate. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and copy this a base point, press J enter, and I'll paste it over here, J enter, and we'll make it thirty-nine point five. Great. We can now import this into our project. So we can go to sewer mode and we can go to file project settings, we need to create a database to store it in. I'll click on the tick, I'll go inside here and we'll call this civil project sewer. We can save our work so far and we can then import it. Before we import it, remember we, um, we spoke about the 160s, all being 160s, so you can convert using the layers or you can go to your default settings, which is edit default settings, and you can change all your pipe types or diameters to be 160. Auto sizing means it will choose a pipe size for you based on capacities, but you can fix it in our case, we are modeling an existing network. So we could choose the 160s and say, OK. We can then bring in the node names if you wish. Let's go and have a look at what those look like, if there's anything of use there. So we can go and right click here. We can add an extra layer called GIS SE no, um, manhole names. We can make it the current so that it'll update there. And let's go and see if we can bring in those. So I'm going to go to load drawing, change that to shape files, select the manholes. Object ID. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Okay, the object ID is quite long. If you want to work with that, that's fine. Let's see if we can work with that. So I can now go into sewer mode and we can go to our def default settings under edit. We can change those pipes to 160. We can then change the pipe diameters to 160 and we can say OK. So that when it converts, it will convert to 160 unless otherwise stated in the CAD layer. So here you've got 160 state in the CAD layer. You could make this a 200 if you wished. Let's change this one to be a 200 diameter in the CAD and see if that comes through. I'll now in sewer mode convert these. So I'm going to go to import, convert drawing entities. And I'm going to go to the sewer outfall, and that's going to be sewer outfall, node names, 
names, the manhole names, invert levels, the invert levels, the pipes itself is going to be the pipes and the diameters is going to be the pipe diameters. Let's have a look at that again. Out for, out for, no, names, names, invert levels, invert levels, links, pipes, diameters, diameter. Perfect. Great, with it converted into a network, let's just see if everything has come through. So I'm going to go to my display settings. I'm going to go to my link data. Let's put on the, the size of pipe in millimeters. And under the nodes, I'm going to put the manhole name. And for now, I'm going to use the invert level. Just have that displayed. That's in meters. Let's just put the invert level. Let's have a look. So it looks like the invert levels have come through. Um, it does round it. You'll see there, it doesn't bring in the whole thing. And that's because we don't work to that sort of level of accuracy ever. You'll never be able to get any contractor to construct in that level of accuracy anyway. It's brought through the names. Uh, you'll notice the manuals that don't have names get assigned a name. Let's have a look at that uh, diameter. Here you can see 160 is the default, but when we've chosen a different diameter from the defaults, it has picked up and used that other default. One important thing to just take note of when dealing with importing, uh, whether you're importing through using the CAD, is that the CAD needs to match up with your link table. So if we go to edit, and we go to link types. If we're using the UPVC, then if you go to your sizes, here are the sizes that need to be shown up in the CAD as well. You can't use any CAD that won't correspond to the nominal diameters. I hope that was insightful. Um, as you can see from this, there's no gold standard when it comes to using GIS data. And that's why it's important to always bring the GIS data into a CAD so that you can really thoroughly investigate it and see what you're actually dealing with and then convert it to either the DTM or the sewer, stormwater or water networks. Thanks everyone for your time. I hope this helped. Have a great day further. Back to you, Charles. Thank you, Christopher. That was great. And thank you very much to all of you who attended today. Please remember to ensure that you're always using the latest version of Civil Designer, downloadable here on our website at Updates under the Services pull-down menu. Additionally, please remember that if you'd like any further information with regards to Civil Designer, or if you would like to request future webinar topics, as was the case today, please email us using the email address listed on your screens right now. Once again, thank you very much for your time today. Have a great afternoon and goodbye for now.